This week, the conservatives released their slogan for the upcoming election campaign, it's time for you to get ahead. But their plan to focus on the economy and people's pocketbooks is being overwhelmed, today at least, by questions about where they stand on social issues like abortion and LGBT rights. The so CBC's Katie Simpson is here with more. Hi, Katie. So, Hi. so why is that? What's behind this? Uh, there's a story that's emerged mostly uh, starting in the French media in Quebec and uh, picked up by other outlets, including the Huffington Post, about whether some conservative candidates particularly females, were recruited to run for the party under whether it's misleading positions on abortion or whether there was just a misunderstanding. Uh, there are a number of female candidates who, who seem to have the impression that um, the issue of abortion will be dead completely, as in backbench MPs, if they win, will not be allowed to present uh, private members' bills on the issue of abortion. Uh, that is something that uh, Andrew Scheer has not necessarily been clear on, according to his critics, when it comes to the entire debate. However, However, the Conservatives have said very firmly that they will not revisit this issue if they do form government. And that's part of the statement put out by Andrew Scheer's team on this whole debacle that is playing out in, in Quebec right now. Andrew Scheer has been clear a Conservative government will not reopen this debate. So this is essentially a, a story at this point where uh, there are questions, you know, was this really some crossed wires, some mixed messaging, or were these candidates told one thing and now it's not necessarily that's actually the, the party's position. So there are a lot of questions for Andrew Scheer around this. Will he allow those backbench MPs to present that issue? And, and because Andrew Scheer hasn't come out to take reporter questions today, and because he hasn't in the past been clear on this issue, uh, the Liberals, including through uh, Heritage Minister Melanie Jolie, are really trying to lean into this as a way to attack him. If he wants to be the Prime Minister, he needs to actually win the trust of Canadians based on his clear stance. And the reality is right now is that's not what he's doing. So this is part of a broader narrative that the, the Liberals are really trying to paint Andrew Scheer as, as a deeply social conservative, someone who relied on the social conservative vote to win the party leadership during that contest in 2017. And because he hasn't been clear on this, uh, they're trying to find a wedge in there to define him. And we saw this play out last week right. as well on, the, on video, the issue yeah. of uh, same-sex marriage. Yeah, and in that video that was released, I think it was by Minister Ralph Goodale initially, it was talking about the upcoming Pride Parade and why isn't Andrew Scheer attending. They pulled a, a clip from him from 2005 uh, where he's, he talked about not supporting same-sex marriage and then his response to it was that he does support it, like nowadays, he does support it in, in law, homosexual in law. marriage as in law, which drew more criticism. Uh, you caught up today with an openly gay conservative candidate. What did he have to say about the way the debate is playing out? I did. He says he is one of four openly gay conservative candidates running in this election. His name is Eric Duncan uh, and he's running in a rural riding just outside of Ottawa. Uh, I asked him, you know, is this issue going to come up if 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 the Conservatives win? Are you comfortable with the conversation around this and, and what you've heard from your leader on this issue? Here's what he had to say. I would not be running in this election um, if I felt in any way uh, encumbered or unwelcome. Just because you don't go to a parade does not mean you're supportive or don't care or won't work on those issues that are important to people. He says he completely believes that Andrew Scheer has, has uh, evolved on this issue and he looks to people in his own life who in 2004, 2005 may have had a very different position on same-sex marriage and equal marriage and that he, he looks at the evolution in his community with his own family and he says that Canadians should understand that that's what's happening here. That's his argument. All right. Thank you, Katie. The CBC's Katie Simpson for us. The reality is, is we need to know what Scheer's position on women's rights and also on uh, LGBTQ issues because he's been flip-flopping on this issue and we need to make sure that he looks Canadians in the eyes and tells exactly what he thinks and in order to make sure that Canadians can make a choice on October 21st. And it's a question of honesty. We need to make sure that Canadians know what is Shear's position on those issues. Liberal Cabinet Minister Melanie Jolie says she's asking for clarity from Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. His Quebec lieutenant, Alain Reyes, has inadvertently stirred up the abortion issue once again. Reyes reportedly told potential Tory candidates not only would Conservative leader Andrew Scheer not reopen the abortion debate, but that MPs would not even be allowed to bring forth anti-abortion bills. Reyes has since corrected that by saying he was, quote, sorry for any confusion and that he misinterpreted what his leader said. Andrew Scheer's office is sticking to the pledge that, quote, a Conservative government will not reopen this debate. So how far does that pledge go? Time for the power panel. In Calgary, former Conservative Cabinet Minister Stockwell Day, Amanda Alvaro of Pomp and Circumstance,
Lawrence is in Toronto and here with me in studio, political commentator and former NDP MP Francoise Boivin. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Hey. Hello. Francoise, I'll start with you because this is largely instigated and playing out in Quebec, in Quebec. where a number of candidates for the Conservatives, including Sylvie Frechette, who's a well-known uh, synchronized swimmer, uh, was responding to questions about this and sort of saying, no, this issue is dead. It's not going to come up whatsoever. And then that's how this all sort of unfolded. How do you think it's being uh, or how significant of an issue is that in Quebec? Well, right now it's it's kind of a little storm because uh, as much as Sylvie Frechette was on all the uh, different outlets uh, yesterday, uh, a good, good catch for the Conservative, by the way, uh, very articulate, uh, very solid, was asked over and over, uh, are you at ease with the uh, Conservative values? Uh, because in, in Quebec we know it's a bit more social democratic uh, in, in, in that uh, province. Uh, and uh, she was very, very clear um, and uh, absolutely sure of her, all of her answers, that she had had all the answers that she needed on different type of questions, that she would run, would not run for a party that was, uh, um, uh, that would reopen uh, uh, the uh, the question of, uh, of abortion and, and so on. So how is she today? Does she have to do all the tour again? I think it's more the uh, Shears lieutenant who has to do so because he seemed to widen the position of the party, which has been since Mr. Harper. And I remember because I was in the House when we had to fight uh, the MP uh, Woodworth, who had presented a, an abortion bill. Uh, it, it was quite the fight. I remember asking in the House if the Prime Minister uh, was true to his word and the word he gave Quebecers in Quebec City during the uh, 2011 campaign when he said, I will not, and my party, my government government will not reopen. And since then, it's been the position. Uh, Mr. Reyes, I don't think, was in bad faith. He just assumed that since the government is not reopening, that nothing will come up. So there's still MPs from conservatives uh, that will try to uh, to bring uh, bring forward. Uh, last one who tried, I think, it was Mark Warawa, who is now deceased, but who, who had presented, uh, uh, tried to present a bill and was foreclosed to do so by the uh, Procedure and House Affair Committee. So where does all this go? It goes as long and as far as that leader, Andrew Scheer, doesn't put his foot down and be uh, he's, he's, his own deterrent, if I could say so myself, because there's so many ways to be Justin Trudeau, and he's just failing miserably and, and showing leadership and calming his troop and saying exactly what he thinks. Stockwell, let me ask you, because I remember speaking with a, a couple liberal ministers not long ago, and they were saying they wanted this issue. They wanted the sort of quote-unquote values issue to be front and center, specifically in Quebec. Do you think this politically works? Yes, just being brutally politically mercenary, it works to challenge another leader or a party on a position that f people feel strongly about and try and suggest that that person isn't being clear. I think Andrew Scheer has been abundantly clear that his government will not allow this. He, with some confidence, he points to the last uh, 10 years of Tory government, four of those which were majority in which they could have passed anything they wanted. And in fact, nothing came forward on the issue, but where people are driving the wedge is, you can say your government will not open it, but people are asking, what about individual MPs? Can they even have the debate? And this is where Maxime Bernier yeah. has got some attention by saying, well, I'll allow the debate, but I'm not gonna do anything about it. So these, a number of these MPs, they look to the polls, which show that most Canadians, whether they're pro-choice or pro-life, agree that there should be somewhere, there should be some restriction in terms of uh, number of weeks, number of months, uh, something that would prevent what the Democrat Party has voted on to even allow uh, termination of life after a live uh, a totally abortion. Mm -hmm. So, well, no, 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 this is, I'm just telling you, this is what's driving it. People are saying if, if most, if a majority of Canadians want some, wouldn't we be safe at least being allowed to raise the issue? That's why the issue keeps coming forward. So Andrew Scheer is being 100% clear. The government will not allow this. Where the clarity is lacking is, what about individual MPs bringing up the debate? That's the issue that's got to be dealt with. And that looks like, Amanda, what the Liberals are seizing on today, right? And I, I mean, it's no surprise that they want this to be an issue front and center, correct? 
Yes, they do, um, and for good reason. And I, I think there's two. One of two things are going on. It's either nefarious in nature that the Conservative Party is trying to say one thing in Quebec and something else in the rest of the country, and there could be reason for that. We know that Quebecers uh, poll at about 86 percent in favor of women's reproductive rights, which is higher than that. The national average at about 71 percent. So while the clear majority of Canadians are supportive of women's reproductive rights, there's even a more clear majority in Quebec. So they might be saying something in Quebec and something else in the rest of the country. If it's not that, if it's not nefarious, if it wasn't purposeful, then you have an MP in the Conservative caucus, the lieutenant in Quebec, who doesn't understand the leader's position. It is so murky. He's flip-flopped. He has not been clear on this issue that his own lieutenant, the person responsible for recruitment, doesn't know where he stands. And it's kind of shocking to me that we can go through this many months of asking Andrew Scheer where he stands on these social and values-based issues without getting a clear and concise response. What, is the, the, what is the response you're looking for? Are you looking for the fact that, for example, like Stockwell says, he has been clear that the government won't do anything, but he has not been clear on whether backbench MPs can raise the issue. So is that the kind of clarity you're looking for? Exactly. And we also know that this is a leader who, you know, was voted, voted in on the backs of social conservatives. He's been, you know, photographed with pro-life signs. F almost 15 percent of his caucus has been showing up at at um, anti-choice rallies. So, I mean, listen, there's there's a lot of questions around where he personally stands, where he stands as the, as the leader and where he'll stand as the prime minister. Can't he stand where he wants personally, though? Like, can't yeah. people have their own views as long as they they articulate a clear position about how they'll govern? Sure, but he's not he's not doing that either. And I think I think that's the other problem. When you have an entire province, when you have candidates in a province who said that the reason why they're there is because this issue is dead, and then in the rest of the country you have some social conservatives who want to know as backbenchers if they can bring if they can table this issue, you have a disconnect in how your leader is not only communicating to the country, but how they're communicating to their own MPs and future MPs. I have a well, few seconds left in this segment. But let's yeah. talk about I, I'm really interested in the strategy behind it, right? Because yeah, th there is that for question, one yeah. second that the conservative women candidates, mm -hmm. and they iked it to, I think, 40 percent now in, in Quebec for the conservatives, which is a good statistic, that they're not aware of all that wishy-washy position. I mean, you've got the liberals. They've got, what, maybe 10 MPs who are against uh, abortion, but have been put clearly uh, in the rank by the prime minister. I think Andrew Scheer needs to be a bit more... Uh, um, a, a, a a bit more direct on this on this point, but strategically maybe not because his right might like the fact that there might be some hope, and he, he's still hoping that this will not be the top of all the stories during the campaign. But it's a dangerous game, but it's a strategic game right now. Okay. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.